So we will now talk about uh, building Debian with another compiler by Sylvester Ledrup. And, well, be my guest. Thank you. Um, so the weather is not very good, so I'm going to try to speak loud to, so that you can hear me. So the first thing that I have to say as a disclaimer is that uh, I'm not paid by Apple to do this work, and uh, I'm not into the GPL versus BSD license discussion. I know that it's matter for some, some people in Debian, but for me, it is, I don't care, actually, of this issue. So what do we have currently in Debian? Uh, most of you, I'm sure you are already aware of that. But all the C, C++, and Objective-C that we've got in the archive are built with GCC on every arch. So why am I trying to rebuild that on other archive, on other compiler, sorry? Uh, the main reason is because we can. So it's something great with Debian is that if I want to do something, I won't have any boss coming at me saying, no, you cannot do that. You are not allowed to do that. So I can try to do that, and nobody told me to stop. So the other reason I tried to do that is because it is fun. It, was very un it is a very nice work to do that, because Silang is behaving the same way GCC is on most of the arguments. So it is not a very hard job, but uh, it is very fun and enjoyable to do. And more seriously, if I'm doing this work, it is because uh, so the more you use compilers, the more error you can find. I will show you many examples where Silang detects things that GCC cannot. So it really improves the code that we've got into the archive. Uh, the code is also, uh, the more you use different compiler, the more the code is, is correct and it's more portable. That means if you use some specific GCC extension, you are pretty sure that it won't work with Visual Studio or Intel compilers and so on. So it's very important with this kind of tools that you make sure that the code will run on many compilers and platform and operating systems. And uh, another advantage of especially this compiler, it is because uh, there is a lot of investment on this compiler by the various actors in the, in the embedded field. So for example, the, the latest b benchmark shows that um, Silang on ARM is getting close or sometimes better than GCC. Um, and finally, one of the things that I like is uh, we have been able in Debian to uh, decouple, decoupling, uh, decouple it, uh, the Linux kernel and replace it by two other kernels. You already know that, the K3BSD kernel and ERB. So what I like to do is also replace GCC by another compiler. I'm not talking about removing GCC, but providing an alternative. So. Uh, we just lost electricity, so we are to reinitialize the video system. So um, the tools that I worked with was LLVM and Silang. So they did a nice logo. As you can see Apple, they've got some money, so they can buy some, uh, some nice logo. Um, it started as an academic project by a guy called Chris Latner. Uh, it was designing at the beginning to be a versatile platform that you can use for various research subjects. Actually, he did that while he was doing his PhD, and uh, he used to be also a GCC developer. And the funny story is that he proposed LLVM as a new version of GCC. Um, the way he proposed that was not really well accepted in the GCC community, so he failed to do that. But since he, he had a pretty good uh, ID, uh, people from Apple contacted him in 2005 and hired him and built a team around LLVM. So the goal for Apple, as you know, is, is that they are not very open source friendly. Uh, they are trying to, they were trying and they succeeded to build an alternative to GCC with another license, which is way more convenient for them. Uh, so basically LLVM is BSD, Silang is the same, and most of the tools in the ecosystem are under this license too. Uh, now it has a very strong community. That means that many academics are now doing their research on LLVM, uh, mostly because GCC is pretty hard to hack in. It is, it's not because GCC is not good, but it is mainly because GCC is an old software with a lot of legacy code. It is way easier for new students to get into G LLVM because it is uh, 2000 code. Um, there is also many individuals who are involved in GCC and uh, in LLVM because it's fun. And many corporations are also involved in, the, in this work. For example, Google is investing a lot, uh, ARM, uh, MIPS, NVIDIA, etc. Uh, so what is Silang? Silang or Clang or 
Clang, as you wish, you can pronounce that in many different ways. Um, it is a C, C++, and Objective-C compiler. I know that there are some people who are planning to build a Fortran compiler with C lines, but I don't know how far they, they went. So it's fully based on LLVM. That means that it is two different packages, but Clang is using a lot LLVM behind to build the binaries and uh, do some checking. Uh, it is now the default compiler for Mac OS X in Xcode and uh, the fold from FreeBSD switch in the last release. You have the sources in the, at the bottom. Uh, it has some advantages. So one of them is uh, the base code is more recent. As you know, when, you, when we are writing code now, it is easier than uh, handling code which has been written 30 years ago. Uh, as I said previously, there is strong interest from manufacturer because the code is easy to hack, it's easy to provide new backends, uh, there is plenty of tests. So mm, on the main list, you can see that not only Apple is contributing, but many other actors. And uh, it is supposed to be faster to build code than GCC. So an example, I'm on my daily job, I'm working for Scilab, a free numerical computing software. Uh, there are the figure from the Jenkins that we are using with GCC, which is uh, 24 minutes. Uh, I have to explain that we are also in this 24 minutes building the documentation, some tests, and so on. So it is not, on, it is not only about building C or C++. And uh, C lang is 20 minutes, so we, we have 20 minutes more, uh, sorry, less time to spend here. Um, I'm going to present a lot of source code. I hope you can read it um, correctly. Uh, it has many other advantages, is that uh, it is doing very clever checks. So in this code, GCC, as you can see on the top right, it's not able to detect there is a mistake in the programmation. And here it's pretty obvious to see what is wrong, but if you are reading a full base code, it's it can be very hard to spot. So with CLang, CLang is able to see this code very easily. So in this case, it is triggering a warning that has changed with the W error, but it really helps when you are doing some code. And I will show plenty of examples. Uh, it has a, a side effect also, which is very interesting. Um, there is a new competition in the compiler. So this one is a URL that has been uh, posted on the GCC wiki a few weeks ago. Basically, they are upset that uh, C-Lang people are saying that uh, the warning are way better and the error are way better. So they're trying to show that in uh, the next uh, 4.8 release of GCC, the warning will be better. And actually, this page is an answer of this one, which was a, a list of all the advantages of uh, Clang over GCC. So it, even if uh, Debian stick with GCC, which will be the case for years still, uh, it is interesting because it's really improved also GCC. So GCC developers are taking some ideas from the LLVM community and so on. So it's very good for the ecosystem of free software. So I'm going to present more closely what I've done for Debian in this field. So I try to rebuild the Debian archive with Ceiling. So uh, the method that I used and which has been published on ceiling.debian.net is this one. I agree it is crappy. It is, was just to make uh, an experience. So basically I'm replacing the GCC command by ceiling. Since ceiling is uh, behaving the same way GCC is, all the arguments, or almost all the arguments, are correctly un understood and processed by C-Lang. So it's very straightforward to switch from uh, GCC to C-Lang for C and C++ and Objective-C. So um, I must say that uh, in this case, I only been able, uh, I only been interested by rebuilding the package. I haven't tested the quality of the binary generated. I haven't tested the size of the binary generated, neither the performances. It is not what matters to me at the moment. I think we will do that after. But for now, it is, if we are able to rebuild, it is already a good thing. So I published the result uh, last February. So in the archive that we had at this time, 8.8% uh, of the packages failed. So it is a quite good number and quite unexpected. I was expecting way more failure. In the 2.9, we had 15% of the packages which were failing. So the numbers are pretty good, but I have to say also that the Python module are, are included into this one, the Java module, the Perl. So they are, the numbers are good, but sorry, the numbers are good, but you have also to take on account that many packages are not built with uh, C or C++. 
So the number with the 3.1, uh, we did a rebuild uh, a few weeks ago. So the number increased. So we have 12% of the packages which failed. I'm going to explain why this changed. So we, um, I published the result yesterday evening on my uh, website, silang.debian.net, so you have all the failure. We did the rebuild with a new system of uh, Luca Nussbaum to rebuild the archive. In the past, we were using a French grid computing system, which was called uh, Grid 5000. Now we have um, access to the Amazon Cloud. So the goal for Luca in this field um, is to allow other DD to access to the infrastructure to rebuild the old archive without him to be the bottleneck. So if you want to do some experiment, you can ask to Luca, he will be very happy. So we have enough money to do uh, something like 60 rebuilds per year on the Amazon Cloud. So I use this one, I've got the permission, and now I'm able to relaunch it myself. So we are pretty happy about the result. Um, so now I'm going to talk a bit more about the difference between the so 3.0 and 3.1 of ceiling. As you saw, we increased the number of failure by 4%. So one of the most recurrent errors is this one. So in this case, there is an argument, param, SPP, SSP, buffer, blah, 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 uh, which is a GCC argument, which is used in uh, many uh, programs in the archive, and uh, it generates a warning. And many packages in the archive are built with the dash w error flag. I was very surprised about that, but many packages are using this flag in the archive. So since Silang detects that this flag is unused during compilation, he will trigger a warning. And because of the dash uh, w error, it is going to turn into an error. One of the other stuff that uh, caused many issues in the archive here, 20, so it's not that much, but 20 plus 20 is a lot if you count every, uh, every uh, check that he's doing. So um, in this case, it is just some security check. I know that GCC done the same during the last release, and we've done some work with the hardening and, the, and all the secure, format security. So this one was not understood by GCC by default. Silang is enabling way more argument and check than GCC by default. So I'm going to make a quick overview of the various errors that I found in the archive, rebuilding the archive. So this one is funny, it is one of my favorites. It's just that developers think that if you use O, dash O, and you put a, a number after that, it will improve nine times better than o, the O1. So um, this one is uh, 48 times in the archive. We have also one of the most used is uh, dash O6. Uh, some old guy involved in the compiler world explained me that in the past it has some meaning, but it was 20 years ago. But still, many software in the archive are still expecting some better performance improvement with O9, which we've just seen is not the case. Well, the usual meaning is that it will use the highest optimization level. So in GCC, it is supported to supply any number which will trigger it as the highest available yeah, yeah. optimization, but just in case in the future somebody introduce higher one than yeah. three or four or which whatever. Which is not always but a good idea, as you know. It is. Well, ideally, CLang should yeah. follow and accept yeah. any number, yeah, just I mean, the way GCC does. Yeah, but it doesn't have any meaning. Yeah, yeah I understand your point. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, so there is different in behavior. So I'm, I'm a bit mean here because I haven't put uh, W all for GCC, but GCC obviously is able to detect this kind of error. But in the archive, we still have 132 packages which, uh, does, uh, which do this kind of crap. So in this function, as you can see, we are expecting a result and we return nothing. So first, that means that we are not able to check the return of this, uh, the full function. And that also means that uh, we can get some crap if we are using back the result. So it is bad code, and I think this kind of things helps to improve the code that we've got into the archive. And, and not also us, but upstream, if we publish all the results, they will be able to see that, okay, this code is crap. And we should fix that. So just to explain here, it is uh, Silang is uh, detecting out of the box the, uh, the, the programming error, and it is failing, while GCC accepts this, uh, this code. And this is the other way around. Here we are returning a value of the void function. So uh, GCC here is able to see out of the box without any warnings the, uh, the, the error. 
but um, Silang considers this programmation error as an error and stops the build. This one is pretty funny because uh, it, is a, it is an interesting different perception of the C++ standard by the GCC folk and Silang folk. Um, I won't go into the detail of this one, but uh, basically with the friend class tag uh, coupled with a static declaration, um, GCC will propagate, propagate the friend class tag into all the father classes. You could expect that only the children get the property, but on also the father. It is because of the static. So I reported a bug on uh, GCC, and uh, they say it's not a bug, it is a feature. And I went on LLVM, say, okay, uh, CCC is doing that, and they say it's not a bug, it's a feature. So basically, we have two different behavior here. I forgot to put the reference, but it is only for four packages into the archives. It's but it's pretty tough to, uh, to extract this piece of code. And um, another thing is uh, W all. Uh, with W all in Clang, it is triggering way more warning than in GCC. So this code is not wrong. It is simply that people from the LLVM and CLang community think that we should not write this kind of code because it is confusing to add the parentheses are useless in the, in the conditional. So they think that we should remove the code. So when you enable W all and W error, it is, uh, it is triggering an error. And as I said previously, I'm very surprised by the amount of packages in the archive which, is, which are using W error flag. It's very important. It is, it is huge, the number. So it is causing a lot of failure in the, uh, in the rebuild because of that. Um, one other kind of error that we've got. So on the previous slide. But isn't this code um, common regard with the use of preprocessor um, definitions. So if you have a preprocessor definition, which is, was uh, the equality in the parentheses, yeah. and then you used if and that macro, um, wouldn't that be something that's common out there and even valid? M macro? Um, or what? Pre preprocessor definition. If you define, hash define um, parentheses A equals one yeah. parentheses, and then you do if. It you mean if the processor is able to detect that? No, I mean, this isn't actually invalid. This isn't actually... No, it's not invalid. This would actually be a good thing to do, to put it in parentheses. Ah, okay, if the macro is replacing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, you're right. But you would get the warning anyway. You will get the error also. Yeah, right. But one of the interesting things with Silang, it is, uh, and GCC is doing that in the last release also, it is deflating the macro. So when you have an error which is triggered by a macro, you see the, the, ma the original code which has been defined by the define. So it is way easier to debug when you are dealing with macro. But GCC is doing that also now. Um, as you know, in GCC, there are some extensions to the C standard, C++ here. Uh, this code is invalid in the C++ specification because uh, the declaration uh, of, um, of an array must be static. I mean static. It, it must be explicit and not coming from a variable or a function. So Silang, uh, on purpose, they are not uh, handling this case because they think it is an extension and we should not, uh, they should not manage this case. It is a point of view. Uh, yeah, it's possible to read. Um, GCC also is able to accept code uh, which should be refused. So um, in, this, in this one, it is about the unqualified lookup. It's basically that the, um, um, the, the A, so if we go here, the A function is calling this template which is calling after the B function. But the V function is declared here. So in C and C++, it's not valid because the declaration must be uh, known before the call. So here, it, it, GCC accepts this code while it is invalid. And they are considering that as a bug, but it's very tricky to fix, so they are not planning to fix it. But we have... 4.7 8, I don't know, but I know that in the 8, they are doing more check. But I, I checked the bug, and it is still open, this one. So, um, because I have a daily job and I'm doing many things in Debian, uh, 
I have been lucky and I found two great students in the Google Summer of Code. You know that it is not very easy to find good students, but I'm very happy that uh, I found two amazing students. So the objective of uh, Alexander, uh, mentored by Paul, who is watching in theory here, in the camera. Yeah. So that's just one quick question. Uh, did you, how, how well did CLang do with Boost? Did you try to compile the Boost library? The boost? Yeah, it's working. It was one of the proof of concept of the c -Lang developer. They got all the way through? Yeah, yeah. It was their proof of concept uh, boost. Okay. Because it is well known for big C++ base code. So, uh, as I say, uh, Paul and I are working with Alexander, our Google Summer of Code student, to improve the Debian infrastructure to be able to have uh, Debian built transparently without any things done by the maintainer or uploader uh, automatically building the packages with CLang. So the first I would put, because we needed that for the project, is to write a documentation for WannaBuild. Uh, I know it is surprising because it is one of the tools that we are using on a daily basis, but we didn't have any tutorial to install it. So uh, we've got one on the wiki. You can have a look. Some information are missing, but uh, I've been able to install the uh, one I built without any knowledge of the tool, and everything is working out of the box. So I think it is a great improvement. Um, so what Alexander has been doing also is to uh, work on how to replace uh, the compiler within our infrastructure. So we iterate, and one of the solutions at first that we consider was to provide a, a new package with could be called a default C compiler, default C++ compiler, Fortran, and Objective-C. And um, after some discussion with various DD, we came to the conclusion that this one might be way better to go. It is a lot of more work into the archive, but I think if we want to uh, decorrelate um, GCC from the Debian infrastructure, this one could be the way to go. So if you have a look in many C and C++ packages into the archive currently, we are explicitly doing what I, what I wrote in the line in the middle, CC equal, equal GCC and CXX equal C++. So we are really basing the fact on that the package will be built on this compiler. While we could use CC and C++, which are just symlink to the other, which are already uh, managed by CLang and GCC and G++, which could also, at some point, be used by other compilers for proof of concept, or if you want to develop a new C++ compiler on your own, you can easily uh, use Debian to make all we rebuild to make sure that what you have done is working. So what we did for now uh, is to write Actually, actually, must be fair. Alexander wrote those patches. It, he wrote uh, patches for DPKG, SBuild, and WannaBuild to decorrelate uh, those tools from GCC and use more CC and C++. So, uh, what, so the midterm is right now. So we still have a, a month with the student to uh, improve things. So what we are planning to do next is first to get the patch applied. Obviously, I'm sure that the maintainer will ask us many things and many improvements on the patch, which is normal, some tests, and, uh, and probably I have, we'll have to uh, explain them why we want to do that. But we hope that this patch will be applied. We are currently uh, creating um, BLD services. Well, for now, we are only um, working on, uh, on those processors. ARM will come pretty quickly, I guess, for the other architecture. Um, I don't know if people want to get involved. For now, it's not my, not my concern. I'm mainly working on the, the classical processor plus ARM, because it is what c support supports really. We'll see for the future. Um, official. Well, you know what's mean official in Debian. This is why it is in italic. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I understand what the word official means. I mean, what do you mean by official? Do you mean you intend to replace the binaries in the archive with... No, basically, I, by official, I want this. You see, it is... Okay. Uh, see, to me, official is service. things that get installed into the archive. Sorry? To me, official is things that get installed into the archive. If not, I want to do a parallel build automatic okay. build of the service. Then clearly not official. Uh, when you claim upstream supports ARM really well, I will tell you that that's a filthy lie, um, and I actually have to land a bunch of patches for ARM HF. So just so you know, it's not supported as well as you think it is. Okay, it is. <laughs> I haven't tried. 
but yeah. uh, it is what they put in at least. All right. So, um, so I would like to create. Oh. Um. Sylvester. Yeah. Before, sorry. Before we move, you you said you wanted to use uh, C C and C plus plus binary files rather than just set variable names. Why do you prefer to do it that way? Because it because I'm lazy and it is the easiest way to go. I don't okay. have to hack any code. I'm just uh, editing the virtual machines that I'm providing for the rebuild, and I'm hacking it out of the box. Okay, so you're not are you suggesting that that's what we should do in Debian? No, no, it is that, what so I've done when I did the so rebuild, uh, okay. when I started to work on that six months ago. Right. But uh, no, no, what I'm proposing is to use CC and uh, C++ uh, uh, scripts, or binary or link, uh, instead of, uh, of the crappy hacks that I've done. Um, so what uh, we are going to do next is to have a new suite, so for not make it official, but for having a parallel uh, build of the archive, uh, I would like to have a new suite with, uh, with automatic test and maintainer to be able to see the result on their PTS. Of, on the PTS, they can have, uh, okay, your, you have your package which is failing on C-Lang. If you want to have a look, it's cool, otherwise it's no big deal. Um, uh, we are also planning to add a Lintian warning. So uh, to say that when you are building and you are explicitly uh, calling GCC or G++, to ask you to change that for CC or C++ instead. <laughs> Here's the mic for Steve. Please, no, not user bin CC or user bin C++. That will break every cross build ever. Why, why is that? Because the cross, the cross compilers are not going to be in that path. We don't want people hard coding okay. paths to, um, to compiler binaries okay. ever. So we'll have to discuss uh, on a way to do that properly. Um, and um, in the C-Lang uh, build services that we are going to provide, we are also considering to fail out of the box when the package are using GCC, G++, or CPP, and not C-Lang. As I said previously, I'm not trying to push that to replace what we have already. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Uh, uh, well, on the IRC, uh, I think uh, following uh, Steve's question, uh, Kiwi says that uh, we have CMake already for this. CMake? It's something different to build system, but I'm no Kibi knows what it is. Sorry. Uh, and uh, in parallel, uh, with the re result of the rebuild, trying to set up a first repository of packages built by Silang. So in the long term, uh, this will allow uh, some further uh, possibility. Silang is very helpful to create plugins. It is way easier than GCC. And for example, uh, there is some research project on poly, which is uh, a polyhedral optimization. Basically, you go back to algorithm to optimize your function and your loop, uh, and you can get some huge performance improvement, especially on matrix computation. There is also one tool which is provided by Silang, and I would like, it's one of the things I'm going to do soon, is to rebuild the archive with this tool. It is a static analysis tool, which means that you can find some very tricky bugs uh, in some cases, if you, do in, if you go in this loop and after that in this conditional, you can find some memory leaks, some null pointer assignment, and so on. And I won't do that, but if some people are interested, uh, we could also consider the rebuild of Debian with the Intel compiler, which uh, at least in the HPC world, I consider as a reference to rebuild software. And uh, the other student that we've got, I'm going to be quick, uh, is uh, Andre, and he worked basically on the packaging of uh, two libraries, which are also part of the LLVM community, so libc++ and libc++ ABI, uh, is basically to provide a replacement to the libstd c++, and uh, both the, the STL, the standard template library, and the ABI. So what we've got currently is just a small C++ code. If we build currently with C++, uh, with C++, we've got a dependency on libstd C++, 
And if we are using the, the other library, we can see that we don't have any more dependency on the C++ standard library of GCC, but the one that we package. Uh, we are also considering to do the same with, uh, with C, uh, with lib libcc. As I said previously, I'm not asking to change Debian. It's a proof of concept. You never know what the future will might be in four years, five years. And having that might allow us at some point to say, okay, we want to produce a, a version of Debian with another compiler or a new C++ library. I know we are far from it because there are plenty of things to check, but our, our friend from FreeBSD did it. And they will switch also in the next release to, um, to libc++. So, Matthias, if you want to troll a little. <laughs> so, with the packages that you're uh, uploading, do they have any dependencies on packages that are uh, licensed under the GPL? <laughs> Ah, you missed the beginning. I say that I don't care about the BSD and GPL issue. It's not my concern in this field. Do you think that that <clears throat> would impact the primary driver behind C-Lang? The? the the primary motivation for doing C-Lang to, to uh, as I I know what you are referring to. Basically, uh, Tom is referring to the fact that uh, libs std C++ is under GPL. I guess I don't know. I haven't checked. But uh, what I just saw is basically a replacement to this library. So uh, what we are trying to do with, uh, with Paul and our two students is basically to make a full rebuild of Debian without GCC or G++ and to use some third party tools, which are libc++ and libc++ ABI and CLang. So basically the, the license will all be BSD. And to be fair, it is because Apple is investing a lot to have a non-GPL uh, Mac OS X platform. It is the reason why they are producing that many code. And since it is very expensive, many other people are involved. <laughs> so I, um, well, Adam, just to check one of your examples uh, for, for the warnings. And, and we found out that uh, the warning actually for the return from a function is given with GCC. Is? It's, it's printed out, so, and you claim it's not. Okay. So, um, so really. I check between, please, I, I use the 4.6 and 4.7, so maybe so I use the 4.6 right. at this so, moment. So please do not continue the tradition of the Clang developers to compare apple and oranges and never say what, oh, what version. Of, I haven't said a word about benchmark, but so all benchmark about CLang and GCC sucks. I haven't seen any good benchmark about that because they're not comparing the latest version. Right. I, I, I really like the, the comparison, and, uh, but, but please give version numbers and, and so that everybody yeah. can check uh, uh, for that. And, um, yeah. In the case of that particular warning, it may have just... Sorry. In the case of that particular warning, it may have just been that that's a warning that's on by default in CLang and requires W all or turning that warning on specifically in GCC. But that doesn't mean the warning wasn't there. You mean um, this one? That one right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if, if yeah I, I say that uh, with W all, it is triggers this one. Okay. Yeah, I mean well, by default. Say that on the slide. By default, it's not uh, in the slide. No, no. Uh, I say you could, we could watch on the video, but uh, with dash W error, it will show. Uh, it's sure. just a okay, default well, behavior here. I recommend people use WL anyway. Uh, look at the title. It's just <laughs> default, uh, di different okay. default behavior. I'm not. All I'm right. not. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm using GCC every day. That's I'm more using GCC than CLang actually. So I'm not uh, again GCC and trying to push CLang. <laughs> <laughs> if you know that you have to add uh, minus W all. Uh, to get this warning, then do it, and, and well. Yeah, but actually, if I show this slide, if I show this, take the mic, use the mic. Sorry. He's just telling us what caused the failures that yeah. he put in slide three, really, yeah? He's not trying to sell an agenda here, he's just giving us information about which compiler generated which errors in his rebuild of the archive. I don't think that's an unreasonable comparison. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Why do you replace um, Simlink the GCC by CLang, or can you, could you use Dragonek plugin? You are talking about that. Yes. Um, 
So this one was the first version that I've done. It was uh, when we were rebuilding the archive with Grid 5000, uh, I had to produce a virtual image, a S-build image, a tarball to Luca to, uh, to be already set up for the run. So I did, I, I instantiated the S-build on my laptop. I do the hack inside. Basically, I just copy and paste this, and I save the virtual image, and I upload it somewhere to Luca. But in the new system that he has set up with uh, Amazon Cloud, uh, you have to provide him a, a setup script, which will automatically uh, do that. So it's the same code. But uh, I'm providing him with a script, and each virtual machine will launch a setup script at the beginning. Gunnar? Right. Have you tried Dragon Egg? Dragon it's Egg a, is not exactly that. Dragon Egg allows you to use the LLVM optimization uh, from GCC. It's a GCC plugin, yeah. and uh, no, because it is a second. It is another step. But uh, I I know the Dragon Egg developer, and he will be very happy if I could do that. And one of the great things of Dragon Egg is you can also build Ada code, Fortran code, and many other things with, uh, with that. So, right next to Dragon Egg, find the first mic. Yes. So, Dragon Egg uh, just combines the worst diagnostics from GCC with the worst uh, code generation from, from playing. Sorry? So, well, GCC has less good um, diagnostics, as you mm -hmm. did show in some cases, and uh, the Dragon Egg plugin just takes the uh, GCC front end and uh, uses the Clang uh, code generation, the yeah. back end, to generate the code, and that is known to, to be worse than, than uh, GCC. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it, it doesn't make sense to, to, to use Dragon Egg uh, for well, real world uh, development. Well, if I do that, it is only to help the developer of Dragon Egg. So it is just to. But uh, actually, some people are thinking to do the same. But the opposite. I mean, using uh, LLVM as a f uh, CLang as a front end and GCC as a back end. It's a proof of concept. So, on. Um, well, you're, you're proposing that essentially one of the things that you're proposing is that Debian should change the way that all the packages refer to the compiler and refer to CC or C++ and not GCC and G++. And I'm, I'm not opposed to that as an idea, um, but it opens a small can of worms, which is if we invoke GCC, we can have some reasonable expectations about what options we can pass and what the behavior will be. Yeah, if we instead invoke CC, um, somebody is going to have to decide what exactly that means. And um, is it a bug in the package if it makes, you know, it, you can't just change a package and say, we'll change it from GCC to CC, because maybe the package, as you see, doesn't build with CLang. And then is it a bug now in the package that it uses CC? Um, you know, it's like using a bashism without declaring bash, hmm. maybe. Um, Actually, this for needs the, to be thought about, I think. For the argument, it's not an issue because um, they are considering that they should respect and provide all the arguments of GCC. So for Clang, it's not a really an issue about arguments. About code and GC extension, yeah, it is an issue. But well, it, it will be a huge issue, for example, if someone tries to build the archive with Intel because I don't think Intel is following the same argument as uh, GCC. Right, so your answer to that question is CC should have the options of GCC. Since CLang is following the same option, yeah. Well, you're proposing that as a general rule in Debian. Yeah. Okay. But uh, GCC is a standard in uh, arguments, terms, arguments. And I'm not trying to, to standardize all GCC or, or C, or C compiler arguments. I'm not crazy. I'm sort not of complaining. as a follow up to that. Um, Last question, Tom. <laughs> okay, sorry. Thanks. Sorry. Um, in the Java world, um, Gentoo had hooks for different JVM argument strings. Um, we never did that in Debian. And it just turns out that all of the JVMs that we're really running now accept Sun, basically Sun options. And um, 
unless there are more foreign JVMs that come into the free world, I suspect that, you know, for the, the sun options are the ones that people are going to use, even though there could be multiple different implementations of JVMs. I'm not saying that's a great precedent, but that's what we've done before. I don't know, Doko, you have any comments about that? So it is a real last question this time. <laughs> and you can ask it in French if you want. Uh, I, I have some experience with the Intel compiler and the option set is quite different there. So yeah. we, we've actually separated out. We're, we're trying to use CLang and GCC mm. and ICC at the same time. And we, we've separated out the options completely and try to run. Uh, I don't have the same experience with Scilab. I'm building on a, every commit is built either by GCC, Intel, and uh, CLang. And uh, the same argument are working. You use the same. Yeah, I use the same, but maybe it is just I'm using only normal argument. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>